Hello YouTube. Um, I'm back with the uh, Hornby uh, Class 87. I'm going to hopefully fit a uh, decoder in it. So I was just going to do a little video on how to do it. This is the instructions that comes with the um, loco. So obviously lubrication. Just a little odd little drop in between the wheels. Lifting the loco. Um, it says there's six points where you can unclip. I'm going to try doing that with uh, a little uh, flathead screwdriver. So hopefully that will work. And um, to do the decoders, I've got two of these Hatton's 8 pin decoders. One will go in the DVT, one in the 87, so I think I can use either. This one's designed so that if there's no room for the decoder in the uh, main space, you've got an extension cable. So I can run it along somewhere where there's more room. Um, so we'll see which one goes with which. I'm just going to try and uh, ease the body off now. So it says right in the middle. There should be a clip and then up where the doors are. I've ended the loco so I'm going to try this side. See if I can unclip that. that. What I might do actually is uh, I'll leave, try and leave uh, one screwdriver in while I'm working my way along. It was a bit of a uh, pain when I tried to do these in the past because the older models are not very detailed so wasn't a problem with these new ones because there's so much detail on them. Be very worried, uh, well, worried about uh, doing any damage like that's that side. Unclip the thing again, right by this door. Just gently tuck it under. You can see the little. You, know, the, you can see it on the camera the little clip. So quite easy to spot. And again by the door. Right, so I can't lift it all the way because there's the uh, the lights. So what I'm gonna do is just try and fit it. So that light actually lifted off a bit there, so I've got to be a bit careful. <clears throat> there's the uh, blanking plate. So I'm just going to uh, ease that off. There we go. Right now that's off. I'm just going to get the uh, decoders out. I'm going to try the basic 8 pin decoder in this one. Um, that's what was recommended on the Hatton's website. So. And you see the decoder is protected by some uh, heat shrink. 8 pin. I presume that's for any extra accessories that you might need to wire in. But I shouldn't need that, hopefully. So it should just be a case of... Uh, I think... I think that's the right way. Should be as simple as that. Now I'm just going to go just carefully ease these lights back into position as I can. That's probably more fiddly than the actual chip fitting so just something to bear in mind if you're doing it put one end in this end's a bit of a pain just need it to uh, It's 
try and get that in place there. Same this end. Plus I'm always cautious because the very first time a DC fitted a, a Backman loco. It should work fine but I couldn't get the uh, lights to work after it. Swarms in it don't need to be sat in there. Alright, I'm just going to use the screwdriver just to flick that in place. Same with that side, that looks like it's all in. And this one's been a bit of a pain again. Right, I've uh, managed to get the body back on in the end. It's a little bit fiddly, um, so I, you know, as you can see in the video, um, you can't really. Well, you probably can lift the lid off all the way, but I didn't want to. What I would say was, is when it, if I normally do a, a um, chip fit and I'd leave the top off, give it a quick test to make sure it works, then put the top back on. But in this case, I've just. Um, I left it hanging, didn't I? So I just uh, put the chip in, put the top back on, and um, tested it, and it all seems to be fine. So um, the next loco on the operating table is the uh, Backman Virgin uh, Class 47. So I'm hoping to get that one um, fixed up, and then uh, what I want to do is a um, Virgin uh, trains running session on the layout. Um, the only problem is not many of them are actually DC fitted yet. A lot of them have been sat in storage for ages. I bought this second hand from a show you might remember from uh, one of my haul videos. And it does work, but it's quite a, a noisy runner. So uh, I'm not too sure what's wrong with it yet. Um, so hopefully this will be the star of the show. So I'll run that. Um, I've got also got a Voyager, again that's only DC, um, and again it's a bit noisy. We've got the older Hornby Class 86, so we'll probably get that one running. And um, I've got the Hornby Pendolino, and um, I'll probably also throw in the Virgin East Coast HST as well, just to um, get, get something else running as well. Um, cause also it's just, they've come to an end now. The with L and the R, the HSTs, um, very shortly. So, bit of a shame. Like I say, I always like the uh, Virgin Trains livery, and you still see the odd couple of coaches in that livery as well, Mark Twos. So, um, keep an eye out for the running session, and uh, thanks for watching. Right, I thought. Um, Seeing as I've done the 87, I might as well do the DVT that's going to go with it. So, um, I'll try and be a bit quicker so I'm not bo too boring. But there's basically um, a Phillips screw at each end that I've seen so far. And also, either side of each wheel, there's a flathead screw there and there. There and there. I don't have the instructions to hand on this, so I'm just basically going in blind looking at the obvious so I'll start with the uh, posi screws I mean it's different to the 87 the fact that you're not just not unclipping it exactly you're just basically unscrewing it which sometimes I prefer to be honest I don't really like digging screwdrivers and things into the body to unclip it um, just in case you do any damage so We'll see how much easier this is. So I've done the Phillips screws. I'm just doing the uh, flathead screws. These are a little bit more fiddly because obviously you've got the wheels in the way. So I want to try. I think, yeah. 
you've got to just turn the wheel to suit the screwdriver basically so I can't actually get them out yet so I'll just loosen them off for now and I presume when we turn it over it should all come, up, come away nicely um, what I usually said in videos in the past is I always have a uh, a pot of some sort to um, put screws in so in this case I'll just use the uh, decoder box and if we just tilt that over should be able to uh, release some of the screws that one's still a bit some of them do stick so that one's out now I don't think these will come out because of the wheels, so we'll just see if the body will slide off. Looks like it's coming from the back. No, nope. I think we need a touch more. On these screws again, they're a bit, they're a bit awkward. It might actually be better in future to wear. Uh, to actually take the wheels out which might seem like the obvious thing but uh, I have done it before without taking the wheels out let's try that again sometimes you just get a bit stuck that they feel loose right so that's released and uh, there we go I think uh, not too sure it's holding the front on. Oh, there you go, just unclips. But again, I don't want to pull on it because obviously these lights are connected up here. So I'm just going to carefully do that again. And now the decoder. I think um, this was the reason why, because we can put the decoder under here somewhere. Because there isn't much space above looking at it so that's the extension arm i'm just going to see if i can uh, unravel it just a little bit of uh, purple wire holding it together i presume that's for an extra light or accessory or something like that so again we're just going to line them up Gently flick off the uh, blank and place if I can. It's quite tight, this one. There we go. Okay, so we're now ready to uh, put the decoder in. Um, one thing I didn't mention for the Class 87 was um, with the 8 pin, it says in the Hatton's manual when you use the Hatton's decoders, because they don't have any numbers on them, that the orange wire is in fact number 1. So it's probably not very clear on that. I don't know if it's coming into focus. But anyway, so orange is number 1. You can quite clearly see number one on the socket, so we'll try that. I'm just going to put my finger underneath while I press it down, just so hopefully I don't bend the circuit board. There we go, that's clipped right in. And again now, these should just plug in together. I presume they can only go in one way, like so. That's clipped in, and I'm just going to tuck it underneath the circuit board, hopefully.
there's a bit of a wire in the way I'm just gonna put it upright there we go it's not like the neatest um, bit of fitting in the well but it's tucked away so hopefully fingers crossed that's it um, now I think now because I took it out off from the back I've got to clip the front in first by the looks of it so I can uh, get that to line up oh, I've actually got the screws starting to fall out now um, right right the front's on so I've just clipped that into place uh, hopefully the back should just push in Again, you've got to be careful with these models where you actually push because it's all detail part compared to the old ones. Right, that's back on now. So it's a case of uh, the longer flathead screws. Just slide them back in. Screw it up. And um, for the end screws, it's a little bit of a pain sometimes. We just put that back on the foam. This is where the uh, tweezers come in handy. So I normally get the screw in the tweezer like that and then just drop it into the hole. Unless you've got a, uh, a good quality magnetic screwdriver, you always guarantee that you'll end up dropping the screw in the bottom somewhere and have to fish it out again so I'll uh, do the rest of the screws and then uh, we'll try on the layout with the class 87 and see how it is so uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video